Uh, Eric is a professional manure applicator from Circleville, Ohio. Uh, serves uh, livestock farms, dairy, poultry, and swine in Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan, and probably elsewhere as well. Uh, Eric is going to be, uh, he's actually in the field today, so I'll be advancing his slides, so you'll hear him tell me to go to the next slide at certain points. Um, but Eric's going to be talking about his perspective here as a commercial applicator when it comes to farmers calling him in these frozen and snow-covered conditions, wanting him to spread uh, what he's telling them, not only at that time, but also other times of the year as well. So Eric, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you and let me know when to advance your slides. Okay, good afternoon from rural Indiana, where it's 28 and breezy today. Um, uh, my title of my uh, speech is Winter Application. Um, we are a manure hauling and application business uh, located, like I said, in central Ohio. Um, also president of the Midwest Professional Nutrient Applicator Association, and that's for all manure haulers, representing all manure haulers in Ohio and Indiana. Uh, next slide. We started in 1985 as a trucking company and uh, transferred into hauling manure using semis in 1987. Um, as is mentioned, we work in the tri-state area. We haul manure, biosolids, water plant lime, and other organics for land app. Lots of, lots of different varieties. Handle approximately 40 million gallons a year. Uh, right now, at this point in time, strictly a liquid application business. We have five semi-trailers and trucks. Uh, we run a double conical semi-trailer where it drains out in the center. We have uh, measuring rods inside so we know how full we load the trailers and, and do a lot of documentation and tracking what we do. We use uh, three 7,300-gallon hole applicators with uh, either John Deere or JCB tractors on the front of them. And we use a nine-shank uh, Dietrich applicator. i got a picture of that in a minute. Uh, we also have dredge and agitation boots. And we'll go to that next picture, Kevin. Shows a Dietrich shank. I'm really a big fan of the Dietrich shanks. It, uh, one thing about uh, getting in a pinch in winter application is, is not to get in that pinch. The no-till Dietrich shank lets us go on adjoining crop farmers that may want to be in a no-till situation. Um, My thoughts on a winter application is, my first response to Kevin was when, about today's speech is, we don't do it. Um, don't like the, the environmental risk back to, to our operation, and uh, we just, we say no. Um, we encourage and work with our customers so we don't get in that pinch and realize that sounds really high and mighty, and especially the weather that's been in, in Wisconsin and some other places is, is, is tough. We had a bad fall here last year, had a bad spring, and uh, as I said earlier today, that pushes messenger schedule up for 12 to 18 months farther down the road, and we're paying for that today, trying to, to run. Uh, ran on some icy roads yesterday that didn't work out so well. Um, so it, it is a definite struggle. Um, last winter is a good example, not normal winter for Ohio, but uh, we was only able to apply six days in a five-month period last winter, and uh, just no income and, and lots of crisis management. The ways we avoid winter spreading is we start talking schedules with our regular customers in late summer. You know, who's full, who's tight, how far it's going, how many gallons they have to haul. Um, we have great customers and, and good communication. Uh, don't want any surprises. You know, you pull in and burn out, you think you're hauling it a mile and you got to haul it six. Well, you just added several days to your workload that you didn't, didn't have on your schedule and scheduling is extremely difficult because it all depends on the weather. Um, good communication, again, is really important at all times. Um, and, and I tell my farmers, the phone works two ways. If I don't call you, you call me. Uh, don't, don't wait for me to call you. Be ready for a small window. Um, right now is a good example. We're trying to squeeze in some last projects. You know, we're, we're working almost around the clock and, and we had some time off last weekend. We worked all weekend uh, working on our equipment to make sure that everything was up. Put new, new points on, even though they didn't really need new points to incorporate. But we're going to run on frozen ground. We want everything to be as ideal as possible. 
um, our equipment set up to drain and run in winter situations so we don't spend a lot of time either at night draining out or in the morning trying to get back up and running or install tees in our, our lines so we can drain it back to the barn or drain stuff down at night so we don't have a lot of product and able to control it. Um, be patient. Watch the forecast. Um, you know, find that window. Right now we're locked out one farm here this afternoon, but we'll be back in there at midnight tonight when it shows up again trying to, to run some more before it gets to 50 degrees here on Sunday. And another thing, probably the best customers that we have, um, manure management is an everyday thought. The goal is to, to have the manure moved out by the 1st of October, 1st of November, and that involves using crop rotations grass or weed or whatever may work so that we'll haul manure more days out of the year, have the option to haul manure more days out of the year. Um, next slide is uh, showing a, a little better picture of, the, of my unit. It's just a Dietrich shank with a colder in front of it. The colder situation works in soybean stubble and, and corn stubble that's probably been harvested for 30 days, but that's in there. that equipment will not work in 200 bushel corn that's just been harvested. The next slide is a, a picture of run last week on soybean stubble. Uh, we have several, again, pushing the no-till aspect. That field, um, some farmers will no-till into that come springtime, and uh, that, that makes them happy. I wouldn't say it's ideal, but, but that's not my corn crop, so that's up to the farmer. Um, let me change pages. Okay, if you can't properly apply the manure because of the ice or snow or frozen ground or whatever, then the next thing's plan B, and that's something that's we've kind of done over the years. Because we started out as a trucking company, we have a lot of trucks available, lots of pumps and those things. So next slide shows uh, our fleet of semis, uh, four semis there, and, and transfer options. And depending on the size of the operation and the state, um, transferring has lots of rules. It's expensive. There's not a lot of options. Wastewater plants, probably not. Neighboring farmer, it's probably in the same boat you are. If it's a swine operation, there's biosecurity concerns. And uh, the other thing is, it's a real big no-no, is you've got to communicate. You and the farmer need to communicate, but you've got to communicate with the regulators. Uh, they may they know someplace it's empty or some places that got cleaned out, but you want to talk to them before you start doing things and not afterwards because they, uh, it's very important that we always communicate with the regulatory people. I, I'm starting a new project. I've already talked to my regulatory people and say, hey, I'm going over here. Have any concerns? I'm the one that's doing the work. Call me. It's always nice to have that conversation in a non-stressful situation rather than when somebody's called and jumped up and down and, a citizen and complain about something, and uh, everybody gets their blood pressure up before you start having a good, calm conversation. Um, my last picture is is, uh, is a one a couple years ago. It's not very often you get a semi inside a large dairy barn, but uh, the way the weather was and the location of everything, uh, we pulled in the barn there and was unloading into a, a drain. Um, but if you're short on storage, you're going to have concerns. You're 30, 60 days out from being full. You've got to start talking. You've got to figure out a plan B. You've got to communicate. You've got to plan. Watch that forecast for that little window of, of opportunity and then take action. And uh, that's how we handle it at WD Farms. Uh, good communication and, and hard work. Work your way out of it. So that was my presentation for the day, and I'll pass it back to Kevin.